What is going on, guys? My name is Feeds. Welcome back to Feeds Mindset, episode number 34 with the man, Ace North. Ace, how are you, man? Welcome in. I'm doing good, Feeds. How you doing, man? Thank you for having me. This good. is my first podcast, bro. <laughs> yeah, Very I'm first doing one. good. Glad that we got some Mama, tech issues out of the way. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. I don't know. I don't know what was going on. And no one in my stream yesterday told me that that was happening. Really? See, yeah. I'm, I'm one just, person in Discord. I'm a real something. one. You know, that's, that's all yes, I'm sir. <laughs> so, yes, yeah. Sir. So, um, so before we begin, uh, something I always do normally like to bring up. So me and you definitely know each other decently well. Um, but I wouldn't say that I wouldn't go as far as we don't really know each other that well. Um, I like establishing this because the podcast is about mental health and, and networking and getting yourself out there. And I just like always highlighting right at the gate that it's important that if me and Ace can sit down and have a conversation for an hour, like you can do it, like you can reach out and make those connections. It's hard, but once you get past that factor of holding yourself back, it gets way easier. Um, so I just like, I like bringing that up at the very beginning, but, um, before we get into everything, um, for anybody watching that doesn't know you by any chance, um, uh, just kind of get us through who is Ace North. What do you do? What do you play and where do you stream and stuff? Awesome. Um, well, my name is Oscar. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska. I go by Ace. I've been streaming since 2016. Um, I was on Twitch from December 16th, 2020, or sorry, December 16th, 2016 to, about a week ago when I just kind of said, fuck it, we're going to give kick a try. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been streaming back and forth um, and the growth over on kick in these last few weeks versus, you know, seven, eight years or whatever over on Twitch is night and day. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. So that's where you can find me. Um. I started streaming on an Xbox one with the old original connect camera <laughs> that, had that, that face track yeah. zoom in feature, you know, and so I would put it on my ex or on my TV at the end of my bed, right? I'd sit in my, my shorts and have my snacks and everything. I would play a lot of a battlefield. So I used to be a uh, part of this thing called the hardcore league. And you can think of it as like wagers almost, mm -hmm. but most of the time it was just a bunch of different like battlefield exclusive gamers and teams coming together and just playing, you know, with each other against or across battlefield four battlefield one, you know, um, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so the funny thing is when I first started streaming, like I never looked at chat, right? I never saved my VODs. I would just hit live and I would just sit there for hours gaming. And it wasn't until I started saving my VODs that I realized that the connect camera, the zoom in feature would sometimes zoom out and stop working and then zoom back in on my toes. And it would just be like a <laughs> foot stream for like hours. And, but of course, I had Dang. like zero followers. So they they zero was viewers. privileged back then. Yeah. And no one see, was watching my streams back then. Got to then. see the ace piggies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's uh, funny. But, uh, Streaming, streaming, you know, it's been a part of my life for a good almost 10 years now. Yeah. You know, and and you're definitely, in. you're definitely a very solid creator. I mean, you're, you go on everything. I mean, you multi-stream on a bunch of different platforms. You're always posting your, your TikToks and stuff. Obviously you're a huge advocate for mental health. Um, and, and it's always something, it's always something really beautiful to see because that is something in, in my opinion, definitely one of the, the lesser things ever talked about in this community is, is the mental health and the struggles and the battles that everybody goes through, you know, off stream and off camera and non-content related. And you it's know, there's like just, taboo to yeah, like, talk I mean, about. Like, there's just so much, there's it. a lot of negativity in this space. So, you know, you know, just make this podcast, sit down and, and talk a little bit and maybe shed some light and, and maybe if you're going through something, maybe it helps you. Maybe if you need some tips or something, maybe this is for you or maybe you just need to chill out. That's what it's for. Yeah. It's just spreading more positive light. <laughs> so exactly. Um, the world fucking needs that right now. Let me tell you. Yeah. So, yeah. So I'm kind of glad that we kind of established that. So you've been on Twitch for most of your time and you've just now recently started on kick and, and you're seeing kind of astronomical numbers that little ace would have been blown yeah. over <laughs> back yep. way back when. Um, yeah. I mean, kick is definitely a good platform. I've been on here for a couple months and it's been, you know, kind of same thing. It's been way different than, you know, Twitch ever was. Um, I will kind of give TikTok Live the credibility. I mean, they may not comment that much, but there's a lot of viewership and stuff um, that you can connect with a lot more on TikTok Live. So here recently, I would say, I feel like they've kind of upped the bar a little bit. Would you kind of say the same thing? Definitely. And then they, you know, put out the uh, TikTok Studio for some mm -hmm. creators, and that definitely was a game changer, um, especially for describability. I tell everyone this, like, and I'm still working on this myself. It's not all about the numbers within the platform you're streaming, mm -hmm. but more so growing outside of that platform. An example, like if you want to bring more viewers into your stream, what you got to do is got to grow outside on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, on LinkedIn. I got, I have a fucking LinkedIn. 
<laughs> for my content. Literally, a link. Like it's, I, you got to post your stuff everywhere. You know. Um, hey man, and there's that's... there's that there's that one guy that's on the uh, the adult website. You know, the guy that does the montages yep. there. <laughs> yeah, like, yep. Gotta do yep. what you can, man. Like every Tasty. everything can, yeah, everything can work out, man. Just you oh. just set your mind to it, and it'll work out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's, exactly. I, I think that's a very huge, there's a lot of things we'll get into. Um, I do want to save some of these conversations for later. So that way we can kind of focus on you in the beginning, uh, kind of understand, I know you've kind of already told us as of current day, um, who you are and stuff. So let's go ahead and just kind of travel back a little bit in time. Tell me kind of how you got into gaming, you know, what did, how did your kind of childhood kind of unfold into get into gaming and what this space is and, and what this environment is, how did that lead you up to sitting here today? Okay. All right. So from the day I was born, my mom just put a <laughs> controller in my hand. I was like, you know what? You got the, you got this, son. <laughs> um, no, I think the first game, video game I ever played would have been Tekken. Um, with my older brother, um, my stepbrother, but he's you know he's my brother mm-hmm. in my head. And so, um, his dad was a big gamer growing up, you know. So he had some consoles, and he would let us, you know, mob around on them. But I think my very my first console would have been the pikachu edition of the nintendo 64 wow yep and so that's what kind of got me into gaming um growing up we didn't have very much money you know we're first generation well yeah i'm first generation in this country um and so it was uh it was really nice to kind of have that escape like if i didn't have the game or didn't have the console you know friends of mine would so i would spend lots of time just gaming just gaming i wasn't the kid that was outside too much you know right. until i got a little bit older um Gaming and music. And the thing is, I didn't start to speak English till about fourth or fifth grade, right? Really? So, yeah, it was uh, video gaming was just my thing. You know, I didn't have very many friends at the time. You know, as a kid, I had a few close friends I still have to this day. Um, but there was very little communication between them and I. You know, I knew video games and I knew, like, the basics. Yeah. Um. So, but st- I'm trying to get on this the right okay. way. First podcast. Wow, this is crazy. I never really thought about this. But yeah, gaming for me was kind of like an escape from, you know, the shit I had to deal with, you know, watch my mom work multiple jobs, watching my dad work multiple jobs. My grandma would take care of us full time, me and my little sister. Um, I didn't get to meet my older sister until I was about like eight or nine years old. She lived outside of the country. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my, while my parents were working all the time, you know, I was just with my grandma. And so as a kid, that didn't really dawn on me that, you know, hey, they're working all these jobs and you never get to see them because they're trying to take care of you, you know? So I was always bummed out. My parents had to leave, but my one escape was, Hey, I get to go, you know, no one's going to yeah. tell me how late I can stay up. I'm playing video games. You know? Yeah. And like, I don't, I don't want to take too much away from, from this. I don't want to yeah. kind of steer the conversation differently, but on that topic of, you know, the different battles as, you know, as kids that we go through, you know, cause kind of same thing with me, both my mom and dad were disabled, you know, they was all fixed income. Um, and that limited, you know, us as kids growing up and stuff. So is, you know, how important do you think that is to kind of reflect back on, on that, you know, cause a lot of people have been through a lot in their childhood and they use it as, as an escape. But I feel like maybe if they would be like, I don't really know, like the word, I feel like if they would recognize where they've came from, I feel like reflect. it would be a lot. Yeah. Like it would be a lot easier for them to kind of, to cope and move on. I feel like a lot of people are still like held back thinking from those times where they came from well and uh, you know that's where i was for a little bit like as i got older i mean and we'll dive into this like it was a lot of just really bad decisions mm-hmm. and my selfish you know mindset back then was like well you know the world fucking was against me like who cares mm-hmm. right well my parents weren't there who cares i do what i want right and you know now as an adult i have a, a great relationship with my parents i love them to death you know um shout out mom shout out dad yeah, shout out mom. But uh, I moved out when I was 16 because of like this, just the shit I was into and the mm-hmm. things I was doing, you know, and again, it just went back to like, well, I had such a bad childhood. Like and it wasn't until around 2016 when I started streaming and when I got sober that I kind of started, you know, I became an adult in my head. You know, I kind of started mm-hmm. growing up, started reflecting on things, seeing things. So a lot of people, they'll look at their childhood, you know, depending on, you know, what background you have and where you come. Some people are born with silver spoons, some aren't. A lot of people take that and look at it in the negative light, but I looked at it, I started to look at it in the sense of like, well, when I have kids, they're going to have a better life than I did, you know, but for that to happen, I have to start taking care of myself now. I have to start being positive now, you know, I can't let my past define me. That's one thing (laughs) people should, you know, you guys should, if anyone watching this takes from this is do not let your past define you, you know, 
right? There's a story, um, and this is totally left field, but there's a story um, that I saw, and it was basically the question was, how to go? If you plant bamboo, right, it takes about five, six years to grow out of the dirt. But then mm-hmm. after that, it grows exponentially every couple of days, right? So those first five years, you can kind of take it as like your childhood. Well, you know, you were in the dirt, you were, you know, you're at the worst you can be. You were, you know, life sucked, your childhood sucked, you know, but that was then, you know, you don't know what the future holds, you know, and I had to kind of, I had to really, really like, dial in on that like hey i don't know what you know i'm gonna where i'm gonna be in five ten years yeah definitely what i do know is i can't fucking do all in the past and you should never do all in the past um yeah yeah your past find you (laughs) yeah no definitely i mean i agree it's the same thing just like a little quote that i'd seen like a couple months back from the uh from the owner of kick from from eddie you know he had said you know some of the biggest most successful entertaining streamers hasn't even went live yet and i feel like that kind of incorporates to the same thing to where a lot of people are holding themselves back because of what they went through. But at the same time, like it's, it, it stinks because everybody is opinionative and they are going to take it in their own light and they're going to have their own opinion on the matter. But the raw factor is you want to be successful. You want to do great things. And if you hold yourself back, you're just not going to accomplish it. Whatever your reasons may be for things that tie you down. It's obviously going to be always, you know, situation dependent, but overall, you know, you want to succeed, you want to make friends, you want to network and you want to get out there and only you are going to do it. You can't just wake up one day and it just be handed to you. You know, it, it unfortunately don't work like that. I wish exactly. it did. I wish, I wish everybody could be happy and we could all live a fruitful life and laugh every day, but you know, life's just not like that, you know? And you know, to touch on that, like success is never linear. I say this almost every day, at least once a day to myself mm-hmm. or to someone on stream. Success is not linear. Happiness is not linear. You are only running this race against yourself and your mind. The only things that you are in control of in this lifetime, in your life alone, the only things you can control are three things. You know, your mind, how you react to things externally, and how you react to things internally. Right? You can't let the fear of, you know, your past or the fear of what others are going to think or like you mentioned earlier before we started this podcast like oh damn you know i spent fucking 100 hours on this video and it only mm-hmm. got one view and that's my niece like yeah. you can't you can't let those things get to you you know cuz happiness and success is different for everybody you know yeah some people would be fucking ecstatic with 10 million dollars you know some people would be ecstatic with 10 million followers like it really it really depends some people yeah. are obsessed with like really cool socks. Imagine owning all the, you know, that person's probably like, man, I want to have the world's biggest collection of socks. <laughs> you know, it's, it's different for everybody, man. Yeah. And I, I kind of had the same, th- uh, same conversation whenever I was with Flamey, you know, about, you know, your content and, and how it's doing and stuff. And I feel like that's, that is definitely the epitome of content creation. As you look at a video, you put a lot of work into it. It didn't do well. And now all of a sudden you're just kind of done. And it's like, it's it's not going to get any better sitting there just being upset about it that it didn't do well and like even like yeah. my situation you know, like my cod clips and everything i love being known as feeds that's what i am i snipe i hit clips and i love that people view me that way but there's way more to you than that and on that off fact a lot of people look at me like oh he just hits clips and there's nothing else to him and it's like no like i have my podcast i do my beatbox reactions on my youtube channel like i really yep. try to you know go outside the box and do a few other things and so that and way you shit. have diversity and then there's shit outside of like your content creation that you're probably passionate about and do, mm-hmm. you know, this is a lot of people like, especially like, for example, like, let's say you go, you're, you never opened up Twitch before, or never mm-hmm. opened up kick, never opened up YouTube. And then you tune into like Dr. Disrespect stream, right? You know, your ideology on who he is, is set from that moment forward. Right. Yeah. But you'll never really get to, you know, see what happens behind the scenes with a lot of these creators, you know, what they do when they're not streaming, what they do when they're not creating content, you know, unless you're Mr. Beast and you're reinvesting everything, <laughs> and, you know, like every single day, just recording, you know, and having 10 videos planned, you'll never really be able to, you know, look at someone and be like, oh, this is who this person is 110%. Yeah. Like, fuck, you know, outside of, you know, until like about a week ago. When I was scrolling through your things, I didn't know that you did beatbox reactions. Mm-hmm. I knew that you sniped. I knew you had the podcast. You know, I didn't know you did beatbox reactions. Mm-hmm. So that's fucking dope. I like yeah. That. Yeah. But I mean, and that's kind of the biggest thing. And, you know, it's 
that's the whole thing with content creation, getting burnt out, your video's not doing well, not having fun at what you're doing. And it's, you know, and kind of, I have to reference, reference Flamey again, you know, do, doing that podcast with him a couple of days ago. It's the same thing. Oh, just like his, his main thing is Fortnite. That is his main game. And he brought up a really good point of there's like at least 40 or 50 different game modes of solid long-term content you can do. And just because it's not something you have fun with or you may not know about, it may turn into something that you do for a while. And that was yeah. that was kind of my thought process. I've been in the game for a long time sniping. I've been here since you know Call of Duty Ghosts is how long I've been here. And it took me getting to MW3 to realize like, hey, like I'm kind of getting a little bit burnt out. Like I love still hitting the clips. But hypothetically, it's not going to get me mentally where I want to be. Like, yeah, like even if I have tweets pop off and everybody loves my montages and stuff, it doesn't get me where I want to be as a person. It gets me where I want to be as my persona that I'm creating, which is this guy who hits COD clips. And so yep. I had, you know, I had to have that realization for myself and be like, I want to do more of my podcast. I want to spread more light. And with my beatbox reactions, I want to do something where somebody can sit down for 20, 30 minutes, eat some food and just watch me and forget about their day. That's what it's all yeah. about. Well, and to touch on that, like people, they at least I can't say everybody, mm. but in my eyes, like in this space, right, the you're going to see growth if you want to see growth. Right. But you could only grow so much as a creator and you don't start, you know, you don't ever pass that threshold. And so you start start growing as a person as well. Right. Because mm. people I talk about this a lot when I stream, it's like. If you've seen my streams, you see my content. I'm the mm -hmm. same across all boards. I'm, you know, when I'm off stream, on stream, off camera, on camera, I'm the same person. I don't put up like, uh, you know, I love Doctor Disrespect. Mm -hmm. No disrespect to the man. <laughs> you know, the two time we love the two time, but like he has his persona. You know, he has the glasses, he has the wig, he has the vest. Mm -hmm. You know, he has he. That's him. But that's not who he is in real life. You know, right. um. Then so it's easy to navigate that, you know, those waters because he's not being fake 100% of his time, you know. Right. If you want to grow as a creator, you, you know, you got to grow as a person too. You got to be able to, you know, because people are going to be watching. If you, let's say one of us blows up, everyone, but whatever the case is, someone mm -hmm. blows up, people are going to be able to go back, you know, five years and watch a video from you five years ago in a video current and they want to be able to see that growth. Yeah. You know, it's just human psychology. That development needs to be there. Um, and a lot of people, they get complacent with just focusing so much on their content that they burn themselves out, that they, you know, l lose interest. They kind of like scare themselves from trying something new, doing something different, you know, yeah. um, branching out is definitely important. I've seen streamers who for years, you know, played one game and didn't get any growth. And then once they started doing a variety of things or started doing single player playthroughs, then their shit started blowing up, you know, it's really about just that development that a lot of creators i know get stuck with you know complacency is the number one killer of dreams right right uh, yeah yeah i mean i definitely agree and i think it's just it's really important things to you know kind of using the word again reflect you know just reflecting on you know who you want to be and, and what you want to create and at the end of the day is you being skilled at a game going to not really not in the sense when i say successful i don't really mean like money and views but i mean a goal that you can wake up and you can smile. You wake up and you look at yourself in the mirror and you just smile and you're like, damn, like another day. Like, I did that. Go. That was, you me. know, Let's and go. it's like, there's so many people out there that have millions of dollars and a bunch of people and they're depressed every single day. And it's because they've not gotten as a person where they want to be. And that's the biggest uh -huh. thing. If you lose yourself, the success is going to be pointless. And I say this don't, all the time. Don't your soul. Don't I, your soul. I, yeah, like I say this all the time to people, you know, that really want to blow up. Oh, I hope my videos do well. Oh, I hope I get a bunch of people in my stream. Oh, I hope he raids me. It's like, if you get to the top, then what? You get to the top, you're happy. You What's got all next? the views, you got all the money. Like, and let's say you hit a million subscribers off of YouTube for faking your reactions or whatever. <laughs> You ain't got nobody to celebrate with. You've been fake your whole life. You know, like what's what's the yep. point of it? You know, like you or like ever... recycling content that's not yeah. yours and you know, things like that. It's exactly. Like... And it's like, you know, like everybody gets invested with, with the numbers and stuff, but when it comes down to is, you know, if you cannot be happy with yourself and what you create, you're never going to be as successful as you want to be. Even if you hit where uh -huh. you want to be hit, you're still not going to feel that. And having that, that feeling is there. what matters matters because that's what keeps that motivation for you to wake up the next day and do another video. Uh huh. And I see like I see a lot of creators, they hit that burnout, you know, and then they get in their heads and they're like, Well, 
I didn't get this, the views I wanted. I spent so much time on this video or I didn't get, you know, enough people chatting in my stream, even though I tweeted about it all day and like mm -hmm. reached out to people, you know, a lot of this, like six, that successful feeling that everyone looks for in this space, right? That accomplishment, that what's the word I'm looking for that, like just fulfillment, right? Mm -hmm. You know, nothing's going to be able to bring you that, but yourself, you know, like you said, if you get the million subscribers, the million views, all the money, all the cars, the houses, like if you don't have anyone to celebrate with, and if you are generally not happy, then, you know, you're not gonna, you're always going to just be chasing that next high. Kind of mm -hmm. like with drug addicts. Now I can speak from experience. Like I was, I'm eight years sober, right? Shout out to you. I would, man, I appreciate that, man. Like for me, it was more so about like fitting in and like being that guy and doing, you know, but every fucking night, every morning I was just miserable. I was mm -hmm. fucking depressed. I was miserable. The people around me were fake as fuck. They didn't care about me. You know, like they were enabling me. They were doing the things with me that I was doing. And it wasn't until I cut those people off, got sober and kind of like figured out who I was. And that's when I kind of started, you know, seeing the brighter side of life. You know, I started counting my blessings. Like there's a lot of things that we take for granted, um, especially in this country, you know, that a lot of people go without. Yeah. Like just right now, like the rooms that we're sitting in with our chairs and our computers and you know there's kids there's people all over the world that have none of this you know they've been wearing the same shoes for four years you know there's just a lot yeah. of negativity in this world mm -hmm. um and i feel like as much as i want to be successful as much as i want the million dollars as much as i want the million subscribers you know i know that that's not going to bring me happiness yeah and once you, you know, get sustainable to where your bills are paid and you're going to be fine for let's say the next two or three years then that way you uh, invest in giveaways and charities and, and local people that need your help with friends that's, that's where it matters so i talk. i think i've talked about this a few times on stream like up here in alaska we have a very bad homeless problem you know um the state does not take care of our veterans they do not take care of our you know homeless people at all there's people for a couple of weeks ago before christmas there was a homeless guy he was at the corner over by my house. And every time mm -hmm. I'd see him, I'd give him whatever money I had. Or, you know, when it started getting cold, I brought him, brought him a coat, you know, things like that. This poor guy uh, dropped below zero. And he was outside of the Walmart um, in Midtown in a wheelchair. You know, this guy doesn't have legs. Mm -hmm. And he got so cold and he had a heart attack and he died oh. right there in front of the store because the store wouldn't let him come in to get warm. Wow. And people just kept walking by his body until one person decided to check on him and he, he was dead. It was really sad. So my whole thing is, you know, when I get to where I'm going to be with this stuff um, and when I have the, you know, financial capability, I want to build rehabilitation centers. You know, I want to bring people off the street, get them clean, get them off their drugs, teach them, you know, educate them a little bit, find a place for them to help them find a place to stay, help them, you know, in a trade, learn something that way they can get put back into society and be able to take care of themselves, which means, you know, getting them fed, getting them clean, getting them educated, teaching them a trade, um, you know, the whole social outreach. Like I really, really want to help, as many people as possible yeah. um and i want to be able to one day open up a bunch of these facilities if you look at other countries they you know treat homelessness and drug uh, drug addiction as a public health concern you know like a public problem yeah we're Not just a, a problem, burden but, you know, yeah instead of a burden instead of treating it as a burden they you know treat it as like this person's the scum of the earth like let's you know fuck these people like no mm -hmm. you know and then there's other parts of the world that like really really you know take care of their people mm -hmm. um so my whole thing is if I can help out as many people in this lifetime as possible, then, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to make it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's 100%. where I want to go with this. I'm, I'm the same exact way. And, and I was, you know, me and my fiance talked about that. And I was like, if I can get to the point where I know for the next two or three years, I can sit here and do this full time. Anything else I make go into, you know, whoever somebody needs help, give some subs, make somebody's day. Somebody's going through something, mm -hmm. you know, because that's yep. what matters. You know, if you be too selfish, you're going to get selfish things and it's not yep. going to work and, and affect anybody. And that's kind of the beautiful thing, kind of going right back onto the topic of, of gaming and stuff. You know, it's the whole point of reaching out to people. A lot of people could make a full 180 in their life. if They just had that one friend or that one person that believed in them and it's it's crazy yep. because gaming is that thing and i say it all the time and i know you do as well preaching about mental health and stuff like i'll tell people like, i'll make tweets i'll pop in people's chats that look a little depressed i'm like hey like if you need me dm me and like i'm not calling anybody out i, I promise i'm not but there's creators out there that make those tweets and they don't mean them and i mean them. yeah if you like yeah. if you genuinely yep. have like I don't care if you're on, if you're breaking down crying and you feel like your life's in shambles. Like, I don't care if I don't know you. All I know is you need help. And that's what matters because 
you know, it's not going to help anybody if you're just sitting there and your situation is just as bad as you and you don't have nobody to help you. And like I said, that's statistically a lot of situations. That's like just having that one person to call and talk to for five to ten minutes could make the whole switch up, the whole change. Well, I'm a firm believer. It's like I'm a firm believer in the fact that it takes one person, one situation, one instance, you know, one phone call, one retweet, one like, one share to change your life, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, on both sides of the spectrum. Um, And touching back on those tweets, like you just said, like a Mm -hmm. lot of people tweet that stuff for impressions, you know, or they'll like come in your chat. Hey, how you doing? Blah, 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 man. You're such a great creator. By the way, do you any graphic designers? You know, like, <laughs> this shit, it's, um, like this, the space is a really cool space because a lot of the support, I mean, I'm just speaking from personal experience. Yeah. A lot of the support that I get with my content outside of like my close friends are complete strangers that I've made genuine, awesome relationships, uh, relationships with, you know, through gaming. Right. And so having that system there, like, Hey, if I'm having a bad day, I know I can reach out to some of the NorCal or NorCal Rising guys and go game with them. And, you know, my mood's going to change. Right. If I'm in a situation where I'm, you know, I need help, I need someone to talk to, there's people I know from this community, from this space that I can genuinely rely on and call and talk, you know, my problems out through. Um, the camaraderie within the space is really, really cool, too. You know, yeah. having just, you know, the boys, the girls, you know, the team, the homies, you know, if one person's down, we're all going to come together and help that person out. You know, yeah. no doubt in my mind. Um, that's the biggest thing that like caught my eye with NorCal. Um, with Mitch specifically, he like he always emphasizes at the end of his streams, you know, if you need anything, you want to talk to anybody, whatever the case is, reach out. You know, we have a support system, and that's the biggest thing. A lot of you know, people or not people, a lot of these orgs don't really have these kind of systems in place, you know, don't really mm-hmm. care about the creators as much as NorCal and this community cares right. about each other. Definitely. Yeah, and I mean, I fully agree. And I, I had actually even talked to Mitch just a little bit when the recruitment, I think it was like the first or second week into the recruitment challenge. Um, you know, I've been in the game for a while. I've seen a lot of orgs. I've seen a lot of the ways that they act, a lot of the members within them, a lot of the drama that gets created around it. And, and you know, I don't want to, and I'm not saying you are, but I don't want to make the whole thing about NorCal, but on the topic of it, you know, NorCal, in, in my opinion, is definitely one of the top tier organizations that are empathetic and that actually want you to succeed. And I know a lot of people say that and stuff or whatever, but in those organizations that say the same thing that we want you for you and it's like, no, we just want your numbers. You know, we just want to, yep. to see where you go and, and see what you can do for us. And like hypothetically, like when you're trying to join, you do have to give something. You can't just have nothing. But at the same time, NorCal is definitely one of the top tier teams and organizations that I've seen really go out of their way to make it a mark to say, Hey, you know, as soon as we accept you, we're with you in the long run. And then that's what matters because that's what well, creates your drive and motivation. Not only do they want you to succeed, but they also give us the tools to succeed. I can mm-hmm. say this from firsthand experience before joining rising to now, like I'm a better creator, I'm a better person. My mindset is completely changed all because of the community, you know, the people that I've played with, the people that I've spoken to, getting to spend time at TwitchCon with these guys, like it's there. Like you said, they're empathetic. They want us to win. They want us to mm-hmm. succeed. They're with us for the long run. Um, I just had this conversation a couple of days ago with uh, Levi uh, from Rising, and you know we were touching on people whenever they join an org, right? Mm-hmm. An org brings them in. Their grind stops right there. You know yeah. they made it. They don't. They don't push. They don't. They don't strive for more. You know. And then there's also people who are going for orgs for, oh, this, you know, if I join this org, I'm going to have all this clout, man. I'll, they'll be able to retweet my shit and like, I'll be yeah. able to just like flex, you know. But NorCal is different. NorCal, like the community involvement is amazing. Um, the love is there. The respect is there. Um, I've not seen any drama whatsoever come from mm-hmm. this org. You know, it's just their motto is building positivity and they're fucking nail and hammer with it, bro. They're on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's always a beautiful thing to see because, you know, it's it's kind of the same topic as, as mental health. I mean, regardless whether you gain a stature or get to a point where you want to be where you can join these teams or have these sponsorships and stuff, you know, at the end of the day, we're all human. We all go through things. We all have things that happen in our lives. And that can be the make or break of whatever your situation is, is just having those people surrounded you. And so, you know, just like I said, with NorCal and NorCal Rising, just having that empathetic community that's already there for you, you know, if something goes down, you automatically have people to turn to. And that's that's the most 
wholesome feeling you could have just knowing yeah, that people are there, system. even even when you don't need them, that they're there, and that's that's just it's priceless. Exactly, exactly. You know, and you know, I know we're talking about mental health, but just mm-hmm. like just rear off a little bit Mm -hmm. where i see norcal in the next five years like everything they're doing they're building a solid foundation right Mm -hmm. we got this community everyone you got amazing creators amazing grinders and the diversity within these two you know within norcal within this within ah, oh my gosh that's the spanish that's the spanish (laughs) and you wanting to slip out right there i'm like no Um, the community involvement and just like this foundation that they're building is really really great because you know like you said the support system is there and you're only as strong as those you know you're around Mm-hmm. You know, you're only as strong as your support system, as your foundation. Um, so everyone taking care of each other, looking out for each other, you know, helping each other reach goals and helping each other with videos, getting together, especially with these community nights. Like it's, it's fucking awesome. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. We love yeah, you, Mitch. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely Hope just something, good. something cool to look back on. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, you know, and, and this is a whole conversation in the cell, but you just you just don't know what people are going through. Same thing. I mean, even just like myself speaking from experience, I've I've made a tweet multiple times. I say it in my streams all the time. Twenty twenty three was the worst year I've ever had in my life, and you know, being able to be here now and have the motivation for these podcasts and my content and, and more clips, and even just grinding for this recruitment challenge again, not making it about it, just of what's going on with me currently. Like I'm two and two. The person that I was a year from today, I was in shambles. And now, yeah. you know, I'm strong and I'm on my feet and I'm ready to go and constructive criticism, whatever I need to do. Um, and, and that's it's just a make or break. And, and it can really change, you know, your life. Just a couple decisions to better yourself. Um, that's, the, that's the beauty of life. Like, you know, right now, like if I were to lose everything, you know, it would fucking suck. Mm-hmm. Right. But I know from experience that just because everything's lost doesn't mean it can't be built back up. Yep. Right. The uncertainty of life is really, really cool because right now I, ain't, you know, I'm nobody, but 10 years from now I can be fucking Jeff Bezos. That's yeah. how unpredictable <laughs> life is. Yeah. Jeff Bezos fucking sucks, but just don't, you know, <laughs> yeah. just things. No, I, I definitely understand. So, yeah. So, I mean, that was a cool little spill of conversation we went on and, and shout out to, to everybody that's involved with any topics that we touched on. You know, everybody, you know, I say this all the time. Everybody deserves to be happy and everybody deserves to have somebody to motivate them when they need them. Um, exactly. So before we kind of talk about a, a couple questions I bring up at the end, kind of bring me to, I know we've touched a lot on streaming, just bits and pieces, but bring me into how you got into streaming and how that kind of came to life. Okay. Um. It's kind of a sad story. I wouldn't say sad. It's just a really fucking dark story. Um, you fun. So at like the peak of my, you know, degenerative state that I was in, I don't even know if that's the right word. I was a fucking mm-hmm. just, you know, not touching down on what I was doing. I was just not taking care of my body. I wasn't taking care of my mental. I didn't have any self-respect, any love for myself. I, you know, was down and depressed and just fucking in a really bad place for a very mm-hmm. long time. I mean, I was homeless. I was sleeping in my buddy's garage. I was sleeping on couches. I didn't have any money. Couldn't feed myself, you know. And it wasn't until I, one of my best friends actually, um, he passed away a week before my birthday, June sixteenth, um, of twenty sixteen, I think it was, and he overdosed. And as shitty of a feeling, you know, the whole funeral, everything, it was just it fucking sucked. Mm-hmm. And that was the day I got sober, you know, um, I haven't relapsed since or anything, wow. but from June through, I want to say August, September, October, November, so June through November of 2016, <laughs> I was, you know, I'd cut everything cold Turkey, which fucking sucked. Um, and I really had to like, it was just a fucking shitty couple months. Cause I was, angry i was depressed i was sad i was in pain all at the same time right and Mm -hmm. i had to fucking really just like cut everyone off and change my number and go away for a little bit you know i I completely disappeared um went down to florida for i want to say a month with my uncle and his family um worked my ass off all summer just to like keep myself busy and keep my mind off of you know doing drugs again Mm -hmm. and so we're up and cutting drugs cold turkey is fucking tough It is one of the hardest fucking things. And, you know, shout out to anyone that's battling addiction, going through recovery. Um, Anyone that's struggling with those issues, like it's, it's, you guys know, it's fucking hard. Um, 
so I paint houses. I own a small painting company up here in Alaska. Um, but before, you know, back then I was working under my uncle at his company. Um, mm-hmm. Same thing, painting houses, exterior, interior in the summer. So that's really hard work. So in the summer, you know, we're working 8 a.m. till 9, 10 p.m. sometimes, you know, every single day. And then come winter, like you have nothing to do. Work slows down. Holidays come by. You know, people don't want to spend money. So there's not much work. That's why you work all summer, stack your money Bruh. and then relax all winter. That year, you know, I changed my number. I disappeared, came back, worked my ass off and came wintertime. You know, I was in a little apartment by myself with, you know, my Xbox, my TV, no friends. I didn't have, you know, a single person I can comfortably go hang out with without, you know, them wanting to do some kind of substances. Right. And so it fucking sucked. And I was just in this fucking like deep depressive state and, you know, shout out Marty Lager and, you know, Jake W and all, you know, my IRL homies that I still play with to this day. Cause if I didn't have my Xbox and have them to play with, I don't know where I would, I don't know if I'd be here. Um, so it was literally just gaming every single day for 10, 12 hours, not leaving mm-hmm. my house, you know, ignoring phone calls when I'd leave to go get groceries or whatever the case is. Like I just wouldn't, if I saw someone I recognized, I wouldn't talk to them. I would completely ignore them. Cause I didn't want one them to see me in the state that I was, I was really self-conscious at the time about that. But two, if you were a negative influence in my life, there's a reason why I cut you out, you know, um, cut you off, got a new number disappeared. And Marty Lager, you know, one day was like, Hey, you know, Twitch. I'm like, yeah, what about it? He's like, you know, you can stream from your console, right? I'm like, Oh shit. Word. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started doing it. Um, first it was just console streams, no camera. Um, I think it was, what was I playing at the time? Like Battlefield 4 or something, you know? And then I got the Kinect camera, plug it in. And for about two, three years, it was just, I had maybe like, what, 20 followers, some homies, you know, people that I've met in Xbox, on Xbox. And that was it. No VOD saved, nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, then I kind of started taking it more seriously. Then I kind of, you know, went on Twitch and I developed an about page, took a profile picture, made my panels. And then I kind of started seeing the followers trickle up, right? Trickle in. Um, it wasn't until 2017, 2018, 29, but it wasn't until like 2018 when I had affiliate. And that's when I was like, okay, I got a schedule now, you know, life's good. I'm sober. You know, I, this is kind of what I want to do. I also make music. So it was yeah. music, playing video games and sitting in my apartment for those couple of years. I would go to work. I would work all day. I wouldn't do shit. No movies, no bowling, nothing. I'd go skateboard, you know, but outside of that, like I just really didn't do much those years besides stream. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even think of like the content creating part of it. I just streamed every day. I was live that I could for as long as I could be, you know? Um, and then 2019 rolled around and that's when I kind of, that's when I broke a thousand followers on Twitch was 2019 broke a thousand followers. Um, but then again, you know, I'm still in my apartment, you know, I'm still for the most part sober. Like, yeah, I smoke pot, I drink, whatever, yeah. you know, I don't drink currently right now. But, um, so 2019, 2019 rolls around, I broke that thousand follower mark and I did a 24 hour stream and with the 24 hour stream and you know, I researched it for like a week, what I need to do, how I need to do it. So I had like really crazy incentives. Like every five subs is a shot <laughs> every, you know, 10 subs. I, you know, do a fucking 10 push-ups. I just had the most absurd. I think I had one where it was like, I think it was like 10 subs and I would fucking like load a ball in my bong and rip the whole thing. And like, I was just, <laughs> I got to a point where I was destroying my body and I was giving away, I mean, two, 300 bucks a week Yeah. on these streams. 2019 was like really destructive, but also constructive because like I kind of, I got my first taste of like, all right, I got viewers. I got this, you know, yeah. and I was averaging over on Twitch, 50, 60, you know, sometimes 70 viewers a stream because every time I would do these long streams, I would be giving away fucking game pass codes. I'd be giving away gift cards. You know, I was doing it for, you know, people were coming to my channel for the wrong reasons. Right. right? And so for that whole year and leading into the pandemic, it was just like, all right, I'm going to just give away as much money, party as much as possible be as loud and obnoxious and just crazy as possible on stream. Cause that's what people like to see. But that got like, I, that got really boring really quick. I burnt out so fast from that. And once I start stop drinking as much and stop partying on stream and, you know, stop doing the giveaways, what, what happened? People stopped showing up yeah. and then my channel died for a little bit. 
Um, I can't say died. I mean, you know, within between 2017, 2018 and 2020, I broke another thousand followers. So 2020 rolls around and I'm like, you know what? Console's sick. I love Xbox, but everyone's raving about PC. Let's just, this is fucking get a PC and go for gold. Mm-hmm. So I got a PC. And at the time I was heavily, me and the boys, we would be playing PUBG and <laughs> Fortnite and Rainbow Six, you know, religiously. Yeah. And that, and I'm like, dude, I cannot wait to play this on PC. It's going to be so fucking sick. Little did I know it was the worst decision I've ever fucking made. The first (laughs) thing I bought was PUBG. And I load into it just super stoked, like no camera yet, no microphone, just headset, no monitors. I had a keyboard on a desk in my TV. So I'm playing like this, (laughs) right? Hated it. Fucking hated it. Um, But 2020 is kind of like the pandemic hit and everything kind of just turned around like for the good but also for the bad like yeah. you know pandemic fucking the pandemic sucked for everybody yeah. but content wise i kind of you know little by little i started you know first i got a monitor then i got a desk then i got a chair then i got a camera then i got a micro you know headset and built my first setup within the span of a couple months so by like august september 2020 i had a you know full setup and that's when i kind of started all right when well, i can record stuff i can clip stuff i started using Streamlight. i don't know if it was Streamlighter back then um, what was i using Anyways, I use this program that would like watch my streams and like clip mm-hmm. stuff and make AI videos for it. Um, and then 2021, I moved to Hawaii. Was it 2021? End of 2020, I moved to Hawaii with Mackenzie. Met Mackenzie October 2020. Love her to death. Um, and then I found out about NorCal. And then a year later, I shot for Rising, and now we're here. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, yeah, I mean, you've had definitely an extensive background, which is cool. I mean, you've went through a lot of different experiences and and it, it definitely makes you not only the person that you are today, but, you know, when you get to the point or conversations or new people or wherever you want to be, you have those past experiences, you know, to be able to help somebody. And and that's something I can never really preach on as far as like, you know, the, the drug background and stuff. You know, I, I don't have that, which is, you know, um, everybody, you know, take that's that how fine, you will, yeah. you know, but like. There's things that I can't talk about, but which is no problem at all. Because but you've had your fair share of experiences, you know. Yeah, Just like most definitely. Like, like, yeah, and so like-, like with you, you know, you're able to kind of give a, a more distinctive mindset for somebody that, you know, because everybody interprets and, and makes their own opinions based off of what the other person has been through. So if I were to give them some influence about a certain situation I've not dealt with, and then you have and you've been in it, obviously your word's going to mean a lot more than mine. And, you know, that's just how the world is. And I think that's the importance of, you know, yeah, like it's unfortunate. And, you know, I hate that, you know, all that had kind of happened, but it definitely made you the person that you are today. And yeah. for you to be, you know, sober, you know, shortly after your friend's passing, you know, like shout out to him, you know, rest in peace. And, you know, I'm proud of you. I'm proud that you made that that mark made him the reasoning for you to move on and change other people's lives and be the difference and be the change and just show other people that, you know, if you can do it, so can they. And that it's just, it's a powerful thing that you can never describe and being able to go through that and know that you've made it, it just, it means a lot more. And so, you know, again, like I said, I'm definitely proud of you and, and, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make you emotional, but I know that, I know, I know that he is fucking proud of you right now. He's proud of you. He's looking yeah. down on you. Like, and then the biggest thing was that whole, like, recovery, like, sobriety. Like, I really had to, you know, there's three things, actually. One thing specific. <laughs> this book right here, The Alchemist. Mm-hmm. I've read this book so many fucking times. As long as well with a couple other books over there. But, like, during those times where I, like, <laughs> had to, you know, cut people off and isolate myself, like... I didn't talk to anybody. I was like, wasn't on social media at all. Like that's where the whole mindset matters most. That's where Mm -hmm. I started saying that to myself every day, like, Hey, shit sucks right now, but it only sucks as much as I let it suck. Right. Yeah. That's when I kind of started. Okay. Well, I, this is all new to me. Right. So at this point I'm, I'm sobering up I'm going through withdrawals every day, depressive state. Mm -hmm. I have nobody around and mind you, like my parents had no idea this was going on. Like they had no idea. Like I kept this like, in, under the table from them until like two years ago when I told them before I moved to Hawaii, like I sat down with my mom and dad, had some drinks with my girlfriend at their house. And I'm like, Hey guys, you know, I'm doing this. I stream now. This is why this is what I went through, you know, but during those times, like I really had to teach myself, like I had to like mold my brain almost. I think I talked fucking Mitch's ear off about this at TwitchCon, but I was in a position where 
I knew that my past is behind me, mm -hmm. right? I didn't know what where I wanted to go with my future. What I did know is that I don't ever want to feel like that again, yeah. right? I don't want to deal with that again. I don't want to go through that again. I don't want to relapse. I don't want to, you know, this is a new slate. My past is my past. It won't define me. And every morning I'd wake up, even if I was fucking feeling like shit, you know, I could eat. I just, whatever the case was, I would stand in the mirror and just repeat this to myself. Mindset matters most. You got this. Today's going to be a good day, you know? And the more I told myself these things, I said this for fucking years in the mirror before anything, you know, actually started manifesting. But the more I told myself this, like the more my brain is like, all right, let's go. Mm -hmm. Today's a new day. Let's go. <clears throat> let's go. You know? And it really took just me believing in myself and me trusting myself to get through those hard days, especially when I didn't want to believe that, hey, you know, today's going to be a good day, especially when today wasn't a fucking good day. You know, I still woke up with the same, hey, today's going to be great. When I went to bed, today was a great day, you know, and I would kind of lay there in bed at night, like thinking about like, man, all those people I cut off, like I didn't give them an explanation. Like they been hitting me up, calling me, like wondering what's going on. And I was just like, well, they're only calling me for like one or two things because they either genuinely give a shit or, you know, they want to party. Bruh. They want, you know, they want to go get high. They want to find this. They want to do that. And so I didn't want to take the risk. So I literally just cut everyone off and just as selfish as it sounds, I focused on myself, my health and my family. That was it. And that's when I kind of dove into like, well, what's the best way for me to like, because everything's about positive distractions, right? There's negative distractions, there's positive distractions, just like there's positive and negative habits, right? I'm like, okay, well, what's so bad about streaming? There's not very many bad things about it, unless like, you know, you're sitting in your room at your parents' house, fucking 80, 90, 100 hours a month, not seeing the, you know, not taking care of your body, not right. doing anything, you're just, you know, that's when it gets bad. But I'm like, I don't have much to do right now. I don't have very many friends or people I can really talk to outside of like my gaming friends. You know, let's make the best of this. Let's let's stream, you know, let's let's have some fun. And throughout those years, like I started kind of developing what I like to call like a fuck it, we ball attitude <laughs> towards like streaming, right? It's like, hey, there's I can't lose anything, right? Yeah. I've already lost myself. I'm building myself back up. I don't got much, so let's just see where this goes. And it what really caught me, what really brought me to streaming was like, I thought for the longest time I was alone with like this shit I was struggling with, you know. I thought that no one ever really understood what I was going through, you know, for the, especially for those first, like that first year and a half, I was like embarrassed to talk about. Like when I meet new people online, Mm -hmm. Oh, so tell me about yourself. I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm from I'm from Alaska. I, I make music. I skateboard. You know, that's it. I wouldn't really open up. Yeah. But the more I started, you know, opening up to these people and like opening up and being myself on camera versus being like shy and like whatever, I started realizing that there's a lot of people who struggle with the same depression, anxiety, Definitely. same, you know, shit as I do. And that's what really I really loved about streaming was getting to meet people from all over the fucking world that I can connect with at some, you know, in some way or another, whether yeah. it's through my sobriety, through my addiction, through my trade, through my music, through my gaming, you know, um, and I, this is all I want to do, you know, yeah. and then it's, it's just, it's been every single day since 2016, every single day. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No. And I mean, that's, it's good. It's, it's good advice for, for everybody to understand because everybody's in different positions. And I, I think that's, that's the most important thing before we kind of move on to the next topic is, you know, it is most definitely important to to network and to surround yourself with people that you want to be around with. But at the end of the day, whether you have friends or whether you don't have friends, you're regardless, you're the only one that's going to make that change. You're the only one that yeah. can make that decision for yourself. You have let's say you have three hours to spare. You're the only one you decide either to sleep to watch something, to game for a little bit, to edit some videos, to go pa tap into a stream. Network. Whatever you do yep. with that three hours is your decision. And based off of that little time frame that you may have to put into work, it's based off of how you decide versus what the outcome is. And I think that's that's a more important thing is a lot of people are so focused on why a lot of people don't care about them or why they don't pop into their streams as much or whatever. But you have to reflect on yourself. Are you doing those things? Are you supporting those people? Are you tapping into their streams? Are you making content for them to watch? It goes it goes full circle. You know, if you want to surround yeah. yourself with people like you, you have to be like something for them to be surrounded by. 
but also also before we switch topics mm -hmm. like like you just said everything rely it's up to you right mm -hmm. so a lot of people and this goes back to what i said about like success is different for everybody like yeah. hey if you only have three hours to you know do something right whether it's stream tap into people's streams chat network create clips whatever the case is that's totally fine you know i know a lot of people that are like fuck dude i gotta wake up at 4 a.m so i can fucking stream and then i gotta get clips from like 7 a.m to 12 and then i gotta edit from 12 to 1 like work at your own pace don't overwork yourself if you are happy with the content that you're putting out and if it works with your schedule and you know that you did your best and you are stoked on it fuck all what everyone else thinks as long as you're happy with it like if you like it i like it if you love it i love it you know that's the kind of mind frame i hope a lot of people in this space start to understand like hey you don't have to constantly you don't have to put out five six shorts a day five six shorts a week and four videos you know you don't have to do two, three videos a week. You can do one video a month. As long as, you know, you are happy with that video, how it turned out and you had fun doing it, you know, that's all that fucking matters. Numbers in this space, at least as smaller creators, don't mean as much as people think they do because right. longevity is a big thing in this space. A lot of people, they hit burnout, like they're wearing this fucking fake mask for eight, nine, 10, 12 hours a day and then they get off stream and now they're fucking you know, they don't want to do anything else. They're just fucking tired. They had to put up this fake persona. They fucking overexerted themselves, you know, and it as much as everyone wants to fucking stream 24 seven and have all these big numbers and do all these big things, it really comes down to, you know, how well you performed, you know, in your head, right? Like how happy you are with your content, how happy you are with yourself, how happy you are with the effort you're putting in. Um, I was speaking to Levi again, like a couple days ago, like I said, and one of the things I brought up, it's like, Hey, you know, I have like 124,000 views on YouTube throughout the span of set amount of months or whatever the case is, right? And I think I'm like 103 videos and most of those are shorts. I think there's like 10 long form and like the rest of those are shorts, right? I'm gonna do the same thing that I did last year and this year just better. I'm gonna be happier with it. I'm gonna put more time into it, but at the same time, it's like, listen, if I don't blow up now, whenever I do blow up, and I hope you guys take this as well as possible right you can put out a thousand videos as long as you're happy with those thousand videos that's great because when your next video blows up or let's say your 1100th video blows up now you have 1100 videos and content and things in your piggy bank ready to fucking go so this new audience this new wave that you're on can go back and look at yeah. right so don't think of numbers right now like you said people they'll fucking work so much on one video and it gets you know barely any views that shouldn't be end all be all you just put that in the piggy bank because eventually when you do blow up now that new audience that people, you know, all these eyes are on you. You have this new audience. You have all these new viewers, new, com you know, massive community. You've blown up. You made it. You're already ahead of the game by a hundred fucking videos, yep. right? While they're going back and digesting all that content, you have all this time now to actually strategize and, you know, move forward, forward progression, right? Yeah. That's the way I look at it. So don't think of numbers right now. Just make your video, make your shorts, be happy with them. And then just wait because eventually when you do blow up all that content is going to be right there in the air for you to go and yeah just, and i mean you know, i'm gonna go and watch and i mean the same thing applies i mean even with my you know beatbox reaction and i speak from experience not from like my channel but like watching other people that's why i wanted to do reactions because i had a lot mm -hmm. of enjoyment just watching other people do the same thing you know that that i'm doing and that it's you know even just with reaction samples it's very simple you know they do it and they post tons and tons of videos nobody barely watches and then you finally just randomly find that person one day you watch it and you're like oh like this is really sick i had a lot of fun and then you notice all the videos they posted before that and now like it kind of gets you excited because you're like oh i want to watch this oh i want to watch this let me tab this up let me throw this up you know and it's like yep that's the things that matter and it, it makes that creator's day because when they notice that you're the viewer is enjoying things that they did months and months ago it was all worth it and that feeling that they had four months ago about being upset a little bit because it didn't do well they don't have that feeling no more because they know that you're there exactly and that's the thing too like when it comes to content creation like the word creation in itself is you know it's indefinite, right? It's, uh, what's the best way to put it? It's like a ball of fucking yarn, right? You start off with the ball, but then you, you can start up here, unravel it, and that ball of yarn is running through the entire house, the entire backyard, through the neighbor's house, the neighbor's house, next door. Like, it's everlasting, meaning that 
the more content you put out, you know, the long, even after we're all gone, like our content's still going to be here, mm -hmm. which is crazy, right? It's really crazy to think about. Um, and so you may not be getting views now, you may not be getting likes now, but once that one video pops up or that one moment goes viral or that one person who owns phase or whatever sees your video and decides to you know bring you on or whatever the case is whatever your moment is when that moment comes you're already ahead of the game with all the content you've been putting out throughout the last yep. couple of years yep i definitely agree so yeah so another thing that i always like to bring up with everybody that's on i like to understand kind of you know where you got your name from so where did ace north come into play so this is <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so like i said i started streaming on xbox mm -hmm. right and my original xbox gamer tag to this day is like a some chicken l-i-k-e-h-s-o-m-e-c-h-i-c-k-n when i was eight years old me and my best friend jesse choya and his little brother hayden choya were on youtube we came across um ownage pranks mm -hmm. and they had this video where they would prank call a Chinese restaurant and then prank call another restaurant, another Chinese restaurant, Chinese food restaurant, and put mm, them on speaker with each other. other. Yeah. Yeah. And so there was like some chicken was said in there. It was like the funniest thing to me as at the time, right? <laughs> funniest fucking thing. And so I made, you know, my gamer tag like some chicken when I got my Xbox out here. And I started streaming on Twitch from 2016 through 2019 as like some chicken. I was like some chicken. <laughs> And one day I was sitting in my fucking living room and I was watching, I think it was, I think I was watching Tim the Tap. It was Tim the Tap Man. And everyone knows Tim the Tap Man's intro. What up, Tap Man Army? It's your boy Tim. We got another banger for you today. You know, make sure you tell someone you love them. Thumbs up, right? So I was thinking to myself, I'm like, when I blow up, how weird is it going to be for me to be like, what's up, guys? It's your boy, like us some chicken, <laughs> right? You know, that just yeah. sounded fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> It's it just I did I hated it and I don't know why I was like that probably contributed to why it takes so long for me to grow on Twitch was because of that fucking name. <laughs> I'm like, well, how would I, what would I change my name to? And I'm like, well, I'm from Alaska, so I'm up north. I'm like, who is my favorite movie character? Like one of my favorite you know actors of all time. I'm thinking, okay, Pacino, he's the fucking goat, right? Mm -hmm. And then have you ever seen the movie Casino? Uh, I can't say can't say I have. So he plays uh, Sam Rothstein. Let me see. I think it's Sam Rothstein. Let me see. I'm more than positive he plays this mobster who gets sent to Las Vegas to run a casino. Rothstein Casino. Yep. Uh, and it's based off of uh, the true story of Frank Lefty Rosenthal. Mm -hmm. um, so anyways, in this movie, I'll... Pacino plays this guy named Ace and he gets sent from New York to Las Vegas because casino, you know, around that time, casinos were a big thing and they made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So they figured it was a good way to launder money and, you know, run their organization. Um, yeah. So I'm like, Ace North, you know, Ace North. That sounds, that's simple, easy. Like if someone asked what my fucking Twitch is. I don't have to be like, hey, it's like some chicken. You got a pen <laughs> and a paper. Um, here's the link to the YouTube video if you want to hear audio, you know, you want to hear the audio to it. Like, so yeah, Ace from Casino North, because I'm from Alaska, the greatest state, all US of A, baby. Yeah, that's um, sick. Yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad yeah. that you have something that, that means something to you, too. I, I I will say I'm a little bit disappointed because if your name was still like some chicken, you could always be like, oh, what's what's my stuff? You got to put in the paper <laughs> real quick. Yeah, yeah. You could just make that a it's, thing. That'd be funny. It was, and there's like a lot of times like I'd tell people like, hey, this is me on Twitch. Like, go look me up. And they were never able to find me because of how it's spelled. It was just, yeah, yeah, it didn't work. Ace yeah. North, though, you know, I've stuck with Ace for a long time. A lot of people think it's um, because of Valorant. I started playing Valorant in 2020. I got the drop when I got my first PC. Mm -hmm. um, and I played that religiously. Like, I used to, that's all I used to play was Valorant. All my original videos were Valorant. All my original clips were Valorant, you know. Um, because I didn't start util utilizing TikTok till sometime last year. I didn't start utilizing YouTube at all. I've done like between 2020 and like 2021, I did a few videos I edited myself that were just atrocious mm. and disgusting. And I'm very, very just ugh, cringy thinking about it. <laughs> right. But I never really like utilized, like I didn't post anything anywhere. Right. It wasn't until I got my PC that I was able to, all right, well, I can save this video. Yeah. I can pull clips from it. You know, that's when I started posting stuff. Right. And so like I've grown exponentially in a very short time views wise and stuff like that. 
mm-hmm. but nothing like li- posting stuff under like some chicken just you know a youtube channel like some, like it just didn't make sense Bro. you know no one's gonna be like and coming up next guys we got like some chicken here <laughs> from fucking alaska <laughs> weighing at 195 pounds <laughs> absolute fucking sweat like yeah it just doesn't sound fucking cool you know yeah. Yeah, I definitely understand, and I I think that's you know there's a lot of people out there that that really haven't found their their right name and their right branding, and and at the end of the day, like, and I say this all the time, like to a lot of people it may not mean nothing, it may just be a little bit of a name or something, but not yeah. only the professionalism behind it, but just having having a you know because because we're we're a character of our government yeah. selves technically, however you want to yep. look at that, that's how it is, yeah, and so. Will you create something that you're going to be proud of? So when you get to that mile mark that you want to be, I personally always think that it's important that whatever your name is that you go by is something that should be meaningful. So that way you have something to be proud of, not just say, yep. and I don't mean this in a bad way, but not to like get where you're going and be like, oh, like, you know, mm. like, a, like it was some chicken, you know, I made it, you know, and it's like, it just, it means something. And at the end of the day, you know, just this whole preach about mental health and all that stuff. It ties right into that. Being proud of who you are is the best thing you can have about yourself. 110%. 110%. So um, one more thing that I do want to bring up. We are about an hour. I usually, I don't really put a limit on these at all, but you mm-hmm. do have your community night that is coming up. So I'd say we just do one more small topic and then end off here. Um, yeah, I wanted, sure. wanted to talk about a – so I usually ask everybody if they have anything that they want to talk about. Um, and you had brought up about the female gaming space, um, something that yeah. does not get recognized a lot. If you guys do not know, if you've not seen other podcasts of mine, I've featured tons of wonderful women creators, and you can go and hear about their stories and check them out. It's amazing, and they definitely don't get the the highlights that they deserve. Uh, but you wanted to talk about that a little bit and normalize it for some people. Just kind of raise awareness, because that's the most important thing we can do. Yeah, so I have four sisters and one brother. Like, females are a big part of my life uh, as given it makes sense mm-hmm. um but within the space like i was playing with another creator last night i think and just like and i've heard this before but like i've actually like, playing with this creator last night like hearing that the moment that she opened her mouth like how toxic fucking mm-hmm. it got it, it really sucks because there's a lot of great creators you know and a lot of them a lot let me rephrase this there's a lot of great creators and there's even better gamers and i hate to say this but a lot of them are fe- i don't hate to say this a lot of them are females <laughs> and i hate to say that fucking men hate that for some reason yeah right. you know it's fucking stupid like we're all fucking human right like you don't frown on you know some badass you know ufc fighter for example ronda rousey because she's a woman right but you're gonna hate on someone even though she's a better fighter than you you're gonna praise her but you're gonna hate on someone who's a better gamer than you yeah. because she's a female come on man like there's it's just it's super fucking toxic and it's it's dumb i hate it and i feel bad whenever like i hear these females getting trash talk or seeing like tweets like hey i'm gonna suck and stop streaming for a little bit it's taking a toll on my mental health like it should yeah. that should be this world we live in right like guys men listen here all right <laughs> women make the fucking world go around okay think about it none of us would be here none of us men would be here if we were not birthed by a woman <laughs> like, you know, your mother's raised you, right? Like, am I trying to be that simp? I got a beautiful fucking girlfriend. She's smart as fuck. You know, marine biologist. She's turned my life around 180, right? She, it, it just sucks. Cause like, I've talked to her like, Hey, you know, you should try streaming, sh- try gaming. And you know, she'll bring it up. Like it's a toxic fucking space for her to talk about that and not be a gamer, be in the space at all. It says a lot about where, you know, we are. I feel like we just need to show more respect to the female. Yeah. Man. No, I mean, a hundred percent. I agree with you because me and my fiance, we've been together for over six years. We started dating on September 20, 29th of 2018. I think don't, Forgive me if I, if I fuck up, baby. But, um, you know, I love her to death, and she is in my fucking world. And she's just recently, about this year-ish, year-ish or so, she's got into the gaming community, and I try to get her into streaming and making content. Mm. And she says the same thing. Like, oh, like, you know, I've just ran into some... Like, especially with Valorant. Valorant, Valorant is definitely... Yeah, like, it is a toxic... It's not, it. like, the most Valorant. toxic game, but it's the worst toxic game to be a part of because the duration is so long when you're dealing yeah, yeah. with it. And um, she loved Valorant. She loved it so much. She was a killed creeps. women. Oh, There's yeah. a lot of creeps out there too. Yeah, hundred like, percent. And it's sad. Like, it's really sad it, to see. Yeah, I feel like I mean, women specifically, they have it harder. You know, hundred percent because of everything that they have to go through mentally, that their bodies have to go through physically. You know, 
But what sucks is the fact that, you know, you have the space where there's wholesome, genuine creators, you know, that are trying to make a positive change, try to be positive, trying to spread love, you know, but then there's, there's that select few of fucking people, you know, that just say them and do the most absurd shit whenever they hear a woman, you know, speak on comms or they know that they're playing against a woman. And then there's those creeps on the internet too, that like are sending pictures and just like really ups- it's just it's a weird fucking yeah, thing no, i don't know yeah, why they're just like that yeah they're respect the losers, fucking man. woman damn it All i right, agree man. <laughs> yeah i definitely dude. agree man they they deserve they deserve so much more than they get man. they're regular and people bro and, and the the other thing too like going back on that what i said really earlier about um eddie from kick saying you know some of the best creators haven't even went live yet and stuff that entitles so much to women there is so many yeah. women that could be much larger and much more skillful and better if you know if they just didn't have those things to deal with and it sucks and you know that is kind of the importance of being able to surround yourself with good people and stuff but at the end of the day as a whole that shouldn't be the um what's, what's the word i'm looking for that shouldn't be the excuses oh i don't have good friends so that's why i won't make it it's like no like we mm-hmm. as a whole need to become better to where they don't have to feel comfortable around certain people to then be successful that shouldn't be a thing they should just be able to be successful and be comfortable and play just like us. There should be no difference. Exactly. Like, I mean, fucking the whole equal rights movement, like it's a big thing in this country's history. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, Not just for people of color, but also for women. Right. And it just sucks that we're, it feels like we're digressing back into this space where like, and not to veer off the topic of woman too, but no, like, there's good. a lot of like I hear some comms on. I've been called so many racial things within this space, which is crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. And so a woman get that tenfold. Like I feel like shit when someone calls me the n word. You know, I get mad. I talk my shit back. You know, right? Because there's these internet tough guys, these little fucking kids, little men, right? That just have so much to say when they're playing video games, right? So imagine being a woman, right, and dealing with both of those things. Yeah, that's no, hard. I, that's I hard. definitely, I definitely agree, and my heart goes out to him and stuff, you know. And like I said, I've had plenty on my podcast. Actually, literally just yesterday, um, there's a a gamer girl that I was talking to. Her name's Dimple, and she had made a tweet saying that she wishes that she had more women to play with. And I had tagged about probably 12, 13 I saw that, yep. women creators. Yep. And a lot yep. of them has been on this podcast. But I was like, hey, I was like, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, if you guys want to play together, you can. And they ended up making their own group chat. Now they're going to start a little game night and they're going to have a little bit of fun and stuff. And, and that's like, what it's about, man. That's <laughs> it's what it's all that. about, you know. And yeah. and like I had a couple of them be like, oh, thank you so much, Feeds. Like, you're a go. I appreciate you. And it's like, I don't like, I don't want the credibility for that. Like, I just added you guys because I'm thankful enough to have the experience to know all of you, to know that you're great creators and like-minded people and at the end of the day i I think that's that's definitely the biggest issue i have with the space is a lot of people will only give their advice and their experience if it is worth it for their time and if they get the credible experience from it and they get that fulfillment after being like i did that it's like i don't give a shit if i did that or not like you you need to prosper you know yeah like the whole and that's the last thing i don't know if we touch on this already the gatekeeping Mm -hmm. in this space you know, thankfully, we are within a community where that's not a thing. You know, NorCal, NorCal Rising, we're all one. We're all, you know, a unit. We work yeah. together. We grind together. We support each other. But there's a lot of, uh, especially in the streaming space, I've noticed. And like I said, I've been doing this a long time. Um, I've learned that there's a lot of gatekeeping. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't n- know the right people or you don't hit the right clips or they don't like the way you fucking, you know, go about your business when you stream, like, you're not getting in. And that's not what it should be about, you know? And that's what I noticed over on Twitch. Over on Kick, night and fucking day, bro. I had a, you know, shout out to, God damn it, GD. Um, she randomly came into my channel two nights ago. Never seen her before, never heard of her, you know, nothing like that. Mm-hmm. And she raided me with like 60, 70 people, right? Mm-hmm. And then she invited me to play with her yesterday in her community. And it was a lot of fun, you know? Yeah. And those, that's, you know, Pick kick. I just that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Pick fucking kick. The direction that Twitch is going in right now, it fucking sucks. The gatekeeping on there fucking sucks. The revenue split fucking sucks. You know, the ads fucking sucks. The toxicity, like it's just I don't I I hope someone from Twitch sees this and they, you know, fucking yell at me or whatever. I really do. I got a lot to, <laughs> I got a lot to say. I fucking put four thousand, almost five thousand hours into Twitch. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I definitely understand, man. There's, everybody goes through their own different battles and struggles, but at the end of the day, it's it's what your decisions are. And even something simple of the, the kick twitch battle. Like, you can have your own opinion on it, 
But mm-hmm. it's whatever you decide that you want to do that's going to make that change. So if you're upset with Twitch and you're constantly complaining about Twitch, if you continue to stay on there and ride that wagon, you're going to get the same results. Not saying that you should yep. move away, but if that is your like complaint that they're never going to change, they're a waste of time. You're Try something else. Yeah, like you're the one that's still clicking start stream on that platform. And it's like it's not going to change until you change it. Uh, I think yeah. that's, that's kind of the more um, bigger picture of it. Uh, but at the end of the day, like I said a million times, everybody deserves to be happy. Everybody deserves to laugh. We should all be able to play with each other. We should all be able to raid out and play with random people that we don't know. And no matter how many viewers they have, just be as one, be a family, and just play together. Live, love, well, you laugh. Get a, <laughs> you, know? you, you get a lot further in life with honey than you do with vinegar. You know, That's, what, uh, that's, that's what my mom taught me as a kid. I'm sure yeah. there's just different sayings for the same thing. But at the end of the day, like if you do good, you know, do good, be great, right? Like, you see someone down, help them up. You know, someone sends you a video, they want you to retweet it, just retweet it, dude. Just like it. Go give that person a watch. Go give that person a subscribe, you know, go subscribe to their shit. Like, it does not take that much. It doesn't take anything yeah. to support people. Like, yeah, you can go give subs and spend your money if you want. But at the end of the day, what's going to mean more? Five gifted subs and then you never coming back to the channel again? Or you actively, you know, posting and hanging and engaging? Right. Yeah. Like, what would you pick? Would you pick someone that shows up to your channel one day, leaves you a follow with, and then leaves five subs and you never saw them again? Mm-hmm. Or that same person comes in, follows, subscribes, you know, you start playing with them, you invite them into your community, they invite you into their community, you know, you have game nights, like you build relationships, or, you know, there's financial growth and there's what's the word I'm looking for? Your personal, you know, uh, interpersonal relationships that you can build within this space. Yeah. Me, I would rather have fucking 10,000 people you know that i know that hey if i get a game that's big enough all ten thousand people are going to be stoked to want to play yeah right or even let's say if i can get fucking let's say a community where everyone knows each other everyone plays together everyone's in each other's streams everyone's you know learning from each other and growing from each other i would rather have that than fucking a million random people following me yeah. you know like spreading love is the biggest fucking thing i think this world needs a lot more positivity in it especially you know the last few years the direction that you know just the world is gone love there's endless amounts of room for love right but it's just it's up to like you and i individually like hey we can be a part of the problem or we can do our best to try to you know spread it yeah right i don't know yeah. what I, this is my first podcast i don't no, know you're to, good no yeah word. i don't know how to no, word you're, that but yeah. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> yeah and uh that kind of well, ties into to one of the last two questions i have so you know before we end off this podcast we've obviously talked a lot about a lot of things i'm even messing up my words here and i'm the host we've talked about a lot of things and uh you know anybody watching i hope that any of this has applied to you or maybe changed your mindset or maybe just helped you or maybe you just like listening um so for everybody else that's watching here to end it off do you have any last words that you'd want to say to anybody <sighs> Last words. <laughs> it's better to have tried and given it your all and gone for gold and not made it than to live with the thought that you never even tried. You know, it's always too early to quit, but it's never too late to start, guys. Whatever that is, whether it's gaming, streaming, creating content, gym, work, personal life, yourself, your health, your mental, you know. It's it's, do your best, man, and be happy with that. You know, don't worry about the cloud. Don't worry about the numbers. Don't worry about what people think about you. That's one thing that I really had a long, hard, you know, like I said, back with my sobriety. Mm -hmm. One thing I had a really hard time, like, processing was, like, who cares what people think of me, right? At the end of the day, like, just because this person didn't retweet my shit or fucking like my post or follow me back does that fucking make me any less of a creator or just you know in my head like why does that matter right just love yourselves go for gold it's better to try and to fail and try again than to just never fucking start you know whatever that is whatever you're fucking chasing just do your best to fucking go at it give it all you can without you know ruining yourself in the process without stressing yourself without harming yourself without you know overworking yourself because burnout fucking sucks we're all going to hit burnout but it's like you said it's up to you ultimately how you decide to navigate these waters right mindset matters most guys that's all i gotta say i definitely agree 
So yeah, I appreciate you, um, you know, being on here and everything. I know that you're getting ready to go and do a community night. Last question I usually ask everybody: You have anything yeah. coming up that you're excited to share with everybody or anything? Any upcoming content or anything? I know you got your community night mm. that we just said. Um, everything's exciting. Like every time I go live, <laughs> I feel like I I don't know what it is. And I you know talked to Mitch a couple of days ago about this. Like I need to stream less. You know, I love just being able to get online and just talk to you guys. You know, whether you're having a bad day or a good day, if I can bring some kind of excitement or you know enhance your day i'm gonna do my best to do that you know my streams are all focused about having fun like yeah i like to hit sick clips and like get crazy views you know just like we all do you know but at the end Mm -hmm. of the day like i want people to come to my channel and have it be a safe space if they're having a fucking shit day at work or you know something's happening at home then come in share some laughs you know or laugh at me (laughs) <laughs> um, so not necessarily anything i'm excited for um outside of this you know rc because i've been with rising since march yeah um, the, i think i think that's that that's that's the whole thing i'm excited for is just yeah being no, and that's that's not, live every day that's that's you probably know? the most that's probably the most unique thing you can be excited for man being able to just yeah. wake up and just be thankful that you get to look at somebody's post or something i mean it's just yeah that that, that is definitely the the two and two of which creator you know will prosper you want other people to succeed so you'll succeed it's just how it goes. Yep, exactly. So yeah. Exactly. Um so obviously Ace, I really appreciate you being on here, man. Um I know it's your first podcast, so I appreciate you giving me you know, the, the, the respect and everything <laughs> of, of being able to have your first time. Um you've been a fucking blessing, man. Everything that you've went through and, and everything that we've talked about, man, I just want to tell you that I'm proud of you and I love you and, and I appreciate, I appreciate you. Being that, man. Here Thank today. you. I love you too, dude. Hell yeah. You know, it's uh this is right here, this podcast in itself is like I what we met three months ago. Mm-hmm. Something like that four months ago. I, yeah. when did we we made a war. Anyways, like just this is what this space is about. People like minded individuals coming together for a common goal, having fun doing it and you know, spreading positivity along the way. You know, if yeah. we can make one person's if one person can watch this podcast and learn something from it or, you know, just become a better person because of it or think things differently, you know, in the positive light, and we've done our fucking job as creators. In my head, we're successful. Whoever's yeah. watching this, whatever the fuck you're going through, remember that it's not a bad day. It's just a, or sorry, it's not a bad life. It's just a bad day. It's just a bad moment, you know? <sighs> that's it. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the outro. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, this has been Feeds Matza, episode 34 with Ace North. Please go check his Twitter hashtag right below his head. Uh, go in the description, check out all his links, go check him out. He's actually currently live right now, but when this <laughs> posted, probably not at that time. Uh, probably be posted tomorrow. For, for me and you, it'll probably be tomorrow. Um, but for them, they'll. They'll see it on Saturday. But uh but yeah, hope yeah. you guys enjoy it. This has been Feeds Mindset. My name is Feeds, and we're out, guys. Peace.